Be careful when you download games, because you might download Pixie Rat, and that's no game. So Andy, did you uh, see that article about Pixie Rat? I did, yeah, it was pretty interesting. So the, uh, some researchers over at Silence actually discovered this, what they called a sophisticated campaign that's ongoing. Um, it's been seen in the wild, um, 30 different um, incidents, so to speak, cases have, have happened, but uh, at the heart of this, this campaign is this thing mm -hmm. called a pixie rat. Okay. So a, a pixie rat, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a Python-based Trojan, so that's why there's the, the PY, mm -hmm. um, and then they renamed it. I think, I think the files themselves are named PYX instead of C, C okay. so the folks over at Silence cleverly decided to call it Pixie. Pixie rat, uh, okay. And then it's a remote access Trojan, of course. Um, but it's pretty sophisticated in the things that it can do. Mm -hmm. So you know, right off the top, some of the some of its capabilities, is, you know, it's capable of key logging, stealing login credentials, uh, recording videos. But it can also download more malware because no, um, okay. it because it establishes a CNC a com a command and control. Um, how it actually gets on your machines is actually through side loading. Okay. So you download a legitimate. Um, application, something that does what it is intended to do, uh -huh. but it's been trojanized. And so you get that, that software on your machine, uh, and then, you know, kind of in the background, surreptitiously, you get this Pixie Rat installed. If someone is trying to get a free game off of Tetris, of course, you will get the game. But along with that, um, the users might be getting additional unwanted uh, pieces or software along with that one. So it's the researchers have have stated that it's you know it's sophisticated for a lot of different reasons. One of them is what we just talked about. It's it's complex in in how it's it's built, but it's you know feel fully featured. It can mm -hmm. do kind of a bunch of different things. Um, another reason why they actually mentioned it's it's sophisticated is it's actually been active since I think it's 2018. Okay. And we're only now just discovering this at the end of 2019, mm -hmm. um, which sort of it, it suggests that you know the authors of this malware. Very, you know, they spent a lot of time uh, and put a lot of effort into making this thing hard to detect. And um, there's a, there's a, there's a little bit that's touched on in the article. It talks about how there's there's some um, evasion techniques. Techniques. Okay. So it'll clean up some of the things that it does to make it harder. It doesn't leave as many artifacts Artifact. on the okay. machine as you'd like it to. What it does once it gets onto your machine, it actually use, utilizes PowerShell to ex, uh, to yeah, escalate privileges okay. and to gain persistence. Um, Silence actually has on their blog has a great article on it um, mm -hmm. that goes into a lot of technical detail if, if you want the actual low-level information. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would suggest go read that um, or you can go to ZDNet and read kind of the higher level yeah. um, portion of it. But um, what, what was another interesting aspect of it is there's actually this this third stage I guess you if you want to call it that but it's called Cobalt Mode. Cobalt mode. Is it part of the Cobalt Strike? Yeah, so, okay. so Cobalt Strike is a, is a very well-known uh, pen testing suite. Mm -hmm. you know, it's used for command and control, you know, yep. communicating with, with infected machines, compromised machines and whatnot. And um, there's, a, there's a Cobalt mode built into the actual malware itself, which establishes command, uh, command and control mechanism. Oh. Um, and it has the option for another stage of payload, uh, another payload. Okay. So it's, it's complex in that way. Yeah. Um, so because it uses Cobalt Strike, it, it's actually it's hard to it's it's hard to gain attribution. It's hard to say, you know, this malware is from this actor. Or maybe and this campaign it, it, is part of the same campaign. You can't really distinguish between pen testing and malicious testing. It's yeah. it's difficult to do because mm. it's because Cobalt Strike is used legitimately by a lot of different pen, pen testers yeah. and malware authors, frankly. So, uh, it, well, and, and and beyond that, like any kind of you know intrinsic you know attributes that might be associated with the way somebody writes code in a particular threat actor group aren't present right because they're literally using that third party written code in this case yeah mm. yeah so it's just a sort of a generic tool in that at, at that point so it's hard to say okay. this you know this threat actor is known to have these artifacts occur or you know is known to have this sort of naming nomenclature or something that's all sort of abstracted away now because it's, they're just using Cobalt Strike. So it's a multi-staged Trojan, and as Correct. you said, uh, I, I think I read about even LogMeIn and some Google apps, actually. They can be sideloaded. 
and also I, I think at one stage they also mentioned about Tetris, like a Trojan Tetris <laughs> version. <laughs> so don't yes. get the games from the internet from uh, unknown sources, right? Right, right. And and the the uh, uh, ZDNet actually talks about uh -huh. a particular application, which is a game. Okay. Um, that they discovered was actually Trojanized, and then you know you can get Pixie right that mm -hmm. method. So to to protect yourself, to not get this this malware, yes, don't download games that are from weird sources or weird publishers. Yeah. You know, um, make sure you're sticking to legitimate games. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so. Well, it also calls into question that whole economy of free, right? I mean, you know, the games in question that they referenced are you know freeware games that could be downloaded and edited and then re-uploaded again. So, you know, even and, and there's lots of research that's done on the ways that you know, attackers try to get various pieces of malware into a legitimate Play Store and then subsequently update it out of band with malicious content to make it, you know, a malicious application. And, and you know, there's various techniques to do that. Um, but, you know, really you get what you pay for. And if you're, you know, a fan of downloading, you know, free, you know, software, chances are that software is going to be monetizing itself either through, you know, distribution of software, you know, selling your personal information, you know, some method, you know, serving up ads, which, you know, you can also get infected via the ad network, right, um, with malicious ads. So, you know, that whole, like, just avoiding those those sets of shareware free applications um, in general is, is good advice. Also, I mean, um, if somebody is downloading a game, a gamer probably might have a powerful rig, right? And that can be leveraged for mining, crypto yeah. mining. Yeah. You know, that's that's a possibility also. You're thinking like a malware author here, Ganesh. <laughs> I like it. I like it. No. But the uh, the, yeah. the uh, getting something infected, getting a Trojanized app on the onto the Google Play Store, mm -hmm. some sort of software store, it's not new. You it's know, that's new. something that we see, and you see it all the time in the news, where you know Google will come out and say, you know, we cut. So you many know, apps. X number apps, yeah. and usually that number is pretty large. It's yeah. not like they found six yeah. or seven. It's yeah. usually like a couple hundred or a couple thousand. Yeah. So to your point, Mike, I think this just under, underscores that. It's just very important that you understand if mm -hmm. you get what you pay for, especially when you're downloading games from strange publishers and it's free. Is, yeah. it, is it really free? No, not really. And also I think um, we are in the holiday season and uh, most of the kids will be at home, you know, with yeah. the vacation. They'll they, be bored at their grandparents' house. Right? And they will be playing the games. And right. so it, it's time to be a little vigilant again. Yeah, I agree. Well, and the good, the good news about this particular rat is that just having, you know, good cyber hygiene practices is going to mitigate a lot of the risk associated with this. So if they've, you know, mm -hmm. got an endpoint security package, um, you know, on, on the on the machine, that's going to help. In a corporate setting, you know, if you're monitoring and restricting permissions, um, you know, for things like PowerShell and other types of administrative tools, that's going to help, you know, lock down that risk, right? So ultimately, you're, you're seeing this rat, like many other malware packages, you know, taking advantage of, you know, that lack of cyber hygiene in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, agreed. Yep, yep, I agree. And um, the, the last point I want to make mm -hmm. is this malware seems to be targeting the um, education and um, healthcare sectors. So it seems to be targeted. Education, again, it's leaning towards the students who are more prone to play more games than, uh, you know, non-students. Yeah. Paying attention to where we are getting it and uh, try to minimize to trying to uh, get from other sources rather than approved channels.